Hello friends, how do you do? I hope you're having an okay time of it out there while being under quarantine or uh, if you have to go to work. Uh, thank you for getting out there and uh, helping serve everyone else. Uh, during this time, I've needed something to take my mind off of what's going on and I decided to learn how to make a game. And every once in a while, I try and I give up, but not with this guy right here, not with Arcade Game Studio. So if you have any interest in learning this program, it is not supported anymore, but it does have everything you need to make and uh, distribute a game. Uh, watch on. This is going to be pretty boring if you're not into this type of thing, though. First, I'm going to show you the work environment. I'm going to load a project that I've been working on, uh, which is the ice cream challenge. Perfect. Now, our work environment has six main screens has the project screen here uh, and this contains where you can put the names you know, st uh, lives uh, the behaviors you want when the game ends and stuff whether or not you want to use bombs the gravity uh, well I'll just I'll I'll talk about all this stuff in more detail uh, as we go on uh, you, the sounds to play when the game starts uh, when your character responds when the game ends over here we have character sets I think this is what was used uh, for Atari games. Um, you can use what's provided for you, or you can create your own. I tried, it's pretty difficult. And over here, this is where you choose C C2, right here, C1, set 1. You choose what you want on the screen. Uh, it mainly is just color changes, and these two blink. Uh, here you can control how many points when your character gets an extra life and the sound it plays, and the behavior when the game ends. Yeah, we'll get back to that. Okay, so that's screen one. We're going to move over to screen two now, and this is where uh, the, most of the magic happens when it comes to putting together things. Uh, actually, we can come back to this one because there are more interesting ones up ahead. Okay, now the next few are all of your game elements. Now, you have sprites, which are little animated things, and you have tiles, and you have sounds. So I'll show you my tile set here. You can, uh, this is for the background. These are, you cannot interact with any of these images. So right here I have some, some pavement, and different types of pavement. I have a tree line, as you see there, a blue sky. And you can select as little or as much of this as you like and you kind of copy and paste it onto the playing area. Uh, here I have grass. You'll see how I use these shortly. Uh, okay, moving on. These are our actors, but before we get to our actors, we need to import the things that we're going to use as our actors. And most of the uh, elements here are in uh, values of 16 square. Uh, that's what computers like. They like it when you like nice unsloppy math. Uh, I used to know why they did multiples of two. I forgot. But I have different elements for my game. Uh, these are uh, PNG images and these are to be plopped on my screen. So I have a bunch of different houses. And how I made these, each one of these programs is different in how it allows you to import the images you're using. This game here, uh, like some of them will use magenta as an invisible color. Some you import them everything with transparent backgrounds and it works like that. This program here you need to have uh, the background color set, uh, the hex code 505050, and it is a shade of gray, and whatever's in the background, that shade is invisible. So all of the, I will show you what these images look like outside of the program, but inside the program, all this area here is 505050. These are just single images, and this is they're, they're not doing anything right now. 
when they become magic is when you go over to actors and you turn them into an actor. Uh, I'll get, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So here are my background images. Here is, uh, this was an, supposed to be an enemy. Uh, there are a lot of Amazon boxes, and those are the things that you jump over. So I made a bunch of Amazon box sprites here. Um, I don't know why I have this element in here. This is a tile, but uh, it doesn't matter. This is a driveway. And so each one of these things is uh, basically like a stamp that you can have animated or not. And you, st you place it on your game screen wherever you want it. So you're putting together a puzzle. So when you're creating your game elements, you want to think of all the things you want to have in there, and you create them, import them into this stage, and then you can give them behaviors in the actor stage. This is the coin. This is what the young man uses as lunch money. Uh, I will get into how to make these animated. Uh, now this is just an image of a mailbox. Here's another mailbox. Now I'm getting down to my hero character. The hero is the character that you control. And I'm going to have some. Pardon me. So, yes. <clears throat> the Now we're going to move down to the hero character, and the hero is the character that you control in the game. Uh, so you can really jazz this guy up. Uh, he had, give him a bunch of different animated movements and everything. This is something I did for a... I made this character for a Flash cartoon a couple of years ago, so I had all the animations already, which saved me a lot of time. Here he is getting hurt. Here he is just hanging out. Here he is uh, celebrating. And this is a jump animation and a walk animation. And... Um, I'll show you very shortly how all of those are put together to create a character. Uh, here we have a few more elements for the game. Here's an ice cream. There's an Amazon Prime truck and an ice cream truck. That is the last... Uh, that's where you want to reach, the ice cream truck. Okay, now we have all of our game elements. These are PNG images. They're in derivatives of uh, four. I guess this one is an 80 by 48 image, and it works just fine. Uh, some of them, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, if it's not in a, a, a set of two, doesn't, like, have an uh, even number at the end, sometimes it'll display kind of wonky. But if you're playing with this, you'll figure that out really quick. As long as you test as you go, don't make a bunch of elements and then move on to importing them and then they're all screwed up. you got to figure out what works first. Great. So this is uh, state. This is uh, number five, and the sixth is the last uh, work environment screen here. This is how we import our sounds. Uh, this particular program has two two different settings for sounds. It has sound effects or a sound tune. Now each of the There are different specifications for each of these things of when they can be used. Uh, so sound tunes are things that play uh, when there's an introduction of a screen. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You'll figure it out soon enough. <laughs> so you can load two different types of sounds. Now, you'll become familiar with this replace uh, each one of these screens has a replace uh, no, not the actors, the sprite sets. We have replace, replace, and that affects every other thing. These elements here, sounds and sprite sets, those are put together into actors. So if you update something in sprite sets and sounds, it'll carry over into actors. <clears throat> All right. So if you want to be able to uh, grab and place something onto your screen, 
you need to make it into an actor. So these are the images that we saw before in the previous. See, here's our here's a house. Here's our house one, and I find it's easier if you name the files uh, exactly what they are for your own reference. It makes it a lot easier, and you keep the names consistent as you can. So right here, I have the option to give this. Uh, different behaviors, but I don't want it to have any behaviors. The only thing that matters is the layer to me, and sometimes the gravity. Uh, if the gravity is set to a strange thing, uh, you need to make sure certain elements of the game uh, have this set to zero, otherwise they'll fall off the screen as soon as the game starts. You'll figure it out if you start playing around with it. But the layers uh, say you have your hero character and he's or she or it is jaunting around on layer two. If something is on layer three, the character will walk behind it. If it is something that is on layer one, the character will walk in front of it. So this is important. So in case you start getting overlapping stuff, you want to go sure go make sure that your element is on the correct layer. I think you have six layers to work with here, so those provide a lot of uh, neat possibilities for uh, things you can walk in front of and behind and stuff. Oh. Wonderful. Okay, so these are just uh, single images that can be plopped. Now here, this was my enemy. See, you have all these choices here. You can make a new sprite and a sprite doesn't really do anything except move. Uh, it could be like a, a, something waving back and forth or something blinking, but it doesn't really do much. Um, a new gun, this is something that you can attach to your actor that, that shoots at other things. Uh, our game today is relatively simple. It does not have a gun. A new item, I'm um, pretty sure this is for score. Or some, or shields, or hats, or there's there's a lot of different possibilities you you can do with these new items. Uh, I would read through. Uh, one of the smartest things I did was I I printed out the 37 page uh, instructions that came with it, and I just sat and I just read them for days before I even bothered messing with this. Wonderful. Now, um, I only recently messed around with enemies, so I know how to make them jump and I know how to make them take away my character's points. But maybe that's for a, uh, another video or another. That's I'm not going to talk about enemies that much. Or uh, enemy base. I don't quite understand what that is yet. But uh, here, the spawn. A spawn is when you trip. Uh, a little trigger and it makes other things happen on the screen. Uh, I haven't done anything with that yet. I have done something with check. The check, this is a small piece of script that runs throughout the whole thing uh, which says, okay, is all these enemies dead? Yes. Uh, did they get all this item? Yes. Then you move on to the next screen. So a check is a small invisible block to the player that constantly runs a uh, if-then type program. Uh, duplicate, duplicate or duplicate, uh, you could probably imagine what that is, delete, and then test actor, uh, say your character, yeah, each one of these screens has a testing phase if you don't want to keep exporting the entire game every single time, you want to make sure something works. So we'll see if it. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but you, you'll you'll get it. Uh, this that weird looking screen is sort of. Uh, it'll tell you how things interact with other things. Uh, this little X here. This. Uh, this signifies a wall. But I guess we'll we'll get to that shortly. Okay. Uh, my Amazon boxes here. 
They don't have any special behaviors. They are just elements to be placed on and then uh, the way that they interact with the hero is uh, put together on the, the next screen, the screen here, the stages screen. That's where you mess with whether it can jump on it or it switches up your hero or whatever. I'll show you. The driveway, yeah, that's just an element to plop on. Now here is where, um, here's our score element. This is my nickel animation. So you can choose three different states of this. If you want to uh, make it change three different ways, actually four, um, this would be the idle means if it's staying standing still, move is when it's moving. Uh, pick, I think that is when your hero touches it. It can be used to trigger another animation, like it, it goes poof or something, and then swap would mean uh, it replaces it with a new image or it just goes uh, blank. Uh, on certain behaviors, you can uh, attach sound effects, but some you cannot. I was because imagine if everything was idling everywhere and there was sound effects going on and it would just be madness. Um, here's the layer. Uh, this is, is it on the same layer? Is it in front of or behind the hero? Uh, here's gravity. Uh, this, uh, when you have gravity set in your game, there needs to be a place where things stop. Otherwise, they fall off of the game field. So if something's at zero, or if you've set the default gravity to zero, then uh, things stay in place. Nothing falls off the screen, but if you mess with the gravity at all, um, and there's no floor or platform for your item to stop at, uh, it falls uh, right off the screen as soon as you start. So uh, that's a fun thing to learn. Uh, this end stage here means if you touch this element, will it stop your game? Yes or no? Pretty easy. And here's, here's what you can decide uh, the effects it has on your actor when uh, it touches it. Do you get another life? Does it make you immune? How long? Da 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 da. It's a lot of stuff to fiddle with. It's a lot of fun. Also, there's this screen here. And you have 16 steps. And um, this can... I haven't uh, played with this this much. But you drag and drop it uh, to... See, there's step one, step two, step three, step four. And you drag to uh, different parts. And you can use these elements here to go back and forth to give it uh, certain behaviors. So right now I've had it to jump. Uh, okay, it's not going to jump there. Maybe we'll show it jumping somewhere in the future. Now, here is our hero. <coughs> this is the character that we're going to be controlling uh, during our time in this arena. So, each one of those animations I had is now put together with a control set here. So first we have idle. Now he moves. This is him jumping, falling, crouching. If you want your character to crawl up a ladder, you also make an oops, you make an animation for that. You know, of the character's back or whatever. And then you can have one for death. And there are a lot of fun ways you can tweak these. Um, and you can add sound effects to a few of them. But not all. This, this function here and this function here, I'm not 100% sure what that is yet. Um, but I'm sure I will learn about that in the future. Now here we have the layer property for our hero. And our hero is on layer 3. So anything that we want behind the hero would be one or two, and anything we want in front of the hero would be four to six. Hitbox. 
Now this means what part of our hero here is going to interact with uh, the outside elements. So you have two choices here. Uh, you have the full sprite, which gives you the 64 by 64, or 32 by 32, I don't know how big these are. But that'll be this entire square that follows our character around. And anything that square touches will interact with, that'll set off our triggers or uh, interact with our elements. You can choo use, choose that, or you can choose a bounding box, and you you can set the bounding box uh, over here in the sprite sets screen. So right now, if anything comes in contact with our hero in this 32 by 32 block, our little buddy gets hurt. But if I draw a bounding box around our character, now it needs to be very specific and hit just that box. Do you get it? So you have those two choices. Um, since the game I made was very platform dense, it worked a little buggy when I gave everything bounding boxes, so uh, I'm just going full sprite here. Now this, uh, the speed, uh, there are a few different places you can set these types of things in the game, uh, and this is one of them. Uh, if you set them in other, some other places, they overwrite things, or they just add to what you uh, programmed before. Uh, but right here, yes, you can control how fast you want your character to move, and also how fast they jump. Uh, there are a few different places to set this stuff. It's, it's not too difficult to figure out. Vitality. This means how many hits your character can take before they die. This value also applies to enemies. So, say you had a gun, and you set um, your gun to 10 damage, and your vitality of your enemy was 30, it would take three shots to kill your enemy. Fun. Gravity. Now, I'm guessing you can tweak every element uh, in the game to have a different gravity if you want. And maybe that's fun for a lot of things. This is a very powerful engine. It seems very simple, but there is a lot of stuff that you can do with it with a little bit of creativity. Uh, you can either set the gravity here. See, it says default, but we go back to screen one, and the gravity is 0 0.20. So this is the default. Uh, so you don't need to set it if you are happy with the gravity being 0 0.20 there. Jump move. This means can your character turn in air when, after you've jumped? And this is pretty standard with platform games. You can also uh, program whether or not uh, you can keep jumping or not and if you jump off a ladder or not not really sure what jump keys is I'm sure I'll figure it out soon I think I tried messing with it but I didn't do too good and down here our particular game here does not have a gun he doesn't shoot anything all he does is he jumps and he gets points very fun I hope you're having as much fun as I am. All right, now we're gonna to, we're gonna uh, we're gonna move over to the fun, where the magic happens. These are the stages of our game. Um, a quick recap. We remember right here. This is where the, all the main stuff is set. This is two. This is stages. Three tiles. Four actors. Five sprite sets. Six sounds. And these are controlled with the 1 through 6 number pad. So when you're bopping back and forth, uh, you, you become very familiar with those. Our stages has uh, th 
each one of these here, the notice, this is what happens when you first start the game. It's like old arcade games used to say, say no to drugs, before it showed you the title screen of the game. You don't need to use this. Uh, to disable it, you just hit negative one, disabled. And it's basically the same uh, for... Uh, uh, if you want something disabled in the game, it's usually negative one, and that means it's disabled. But it tells every single element tells you whether or not that'll work. If you did have a notice here, this will give you the ability to have it whoosh into the screen if you wish. Um, or I think, uh, excuse me, I think you could have it bounce around and shit, uh, and the sound effects you want it to make when it's bouncing around, and here is, you can also put a short little ditty. But I have mine to disabled. So, the way that this game works, when you're putting, the, the way that the engine works is each of these elements, they play in order. One, two, three, four, five. So if you skip this, it starts at the title. Here's our title. Ice Cream Adventure. Uh, this was created using tiles. Uh, Actually, I'll, I'll show you. Go over to the tile screen. Uh, if you select, see, you select that square there. And then you come over here, and any place you click that square, that's where the tile goes. This is uh, the back, the, 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 the tree line and the blue sky. That is one layer. The ice cream, oops. Now, to move in between the elements you use, you use the Q and the E. So you can pick tiles, sounds, text if you want to put somewhere, actors, and these are behaviors of how things, uh, uh, things that the, the, the character interacts with in the game. So you can have a wall, a ladder, a platform, uh, these are instructions uh, to for the camera. Uh, if your character passes one of these points, the camera will move either up, down, left, right. It'll follow the player around, so you can tell. Uh, I'm going to call it the camera, or the play field. You tell the play field where you want things to focus. These are just little hints for it that you place around uh, if your character touches that, the character's dead. If you, uh, the checkpoint is, uh, say your character dies, uh, it'll, if you, you don't need to use a checkpoint in your game, but if you do put a checkpoint in there, uh, your character will restart from the checkpoint instead of going all the way back to the beginning. They do that by default. Uh, this checkered, this checkered flag will trigger an end event and uh, I'll show you that when we get to our stage. And then we're back there. Uh, so I created this with tiles in the background, and then I moved over to text, I put this here, and then I moved to actors, and I chose my actor. Ice cream, plop. And that is how I made my title screen. Uh, it will stop at this stage, until it has input, so I put right there, press X to start, and that's how you'll start the game. Here, uh, this has a built-in high score rememberer function. Uh, I'm not, I didn't want to use it, so I disabled it. But if you do, oh, that's not going to print for me. Yeah. So, we've disabled the notice, we have the title that works, we've disabled the ranking, so immediately after title, bam, here's our game. Okay friends, here's my game screen. I just have one level, and uh, I mean, right now it is a big mess, but these have all of our elements that we just talked about. 
and a few more. But instead of going through this mess, I'm going to start a new level and show you exactly how to do it. It'll be fun. Now you can choose whether to go up or to go down. This program gives you a lot of different choices of what type of game you want to make. You can do a run and gun. You can do a platformer. You can do a maze, like Pac-Man. This one is a platformer, like Super Mario. But I'm going to go up here. I'm going to make a new game stage. See right here, this uh, 1 by 50 vertical, which means it goes up. 50 by 1 horizontal, which means it goes sideways. A new game stage. Uh, 16 by 8, not sure... I'm not sure what the map is. I've never used the map, but uh, we'll do that sometime. And an intermission stage is something if you've finished one level and you want to play something. Uh, the game I'm thinking about is Commando. Once you finish one stage, it goes stage one clear, and it, it uh, shows an animation of your character eating, and then it goes. It uh, then loads to the next level. So you can, use this, you can have as many stages as you want, as many intermissions as you want, but you can only have one intro and one outro, I think. But right now, let's make a fresh new screen that we can put together. <coughs> uh, together. So this is how it'll go, left to right. And you can set this if you want it to uh, go uh, one specific way only, if you don't want to be able to backtrack. So if you want to go right, you hit zero, left one, or if you want your character to be able to go back and forth, you set this to two. Tune. Now this is where uh, sound effects and sound tunes uh, make a difference. Uh, say. I only have these three here that are set as tunes, but I have a lot more sound effects. So if you want something to play in the background, it needs to be a sound tune. If you want something to play as an event sound, it needs to be a sound effect. So this is uh, where you set when the stage starts. The hero. This is. Um, you can say uh, your main character had a yellow shirt, or and then you had another instance where they had a blue shirt. This is where you set which character is being used in this stage. We only have one hero for our game, and he's just that boring kid that had, uh, you know, the crouch and jump, and I showed you earlier. This guy here, this is our one hero. But we could make many different instances of this hero. And if we wanted to use a different hero on a different stage, that's where we'd set that. Uh, the countdown, this is if you wanted to have the game be timed, like a race. And there are a bunch of different ways that you could program that. You know, one to six hundred seconds, or you could just disable it, so people could have fun in the environment. Hero automated. Now this is something that I employed with the last game. Ending right here. This is. Remember this. Um, this little checkbox that I showed you earlier. Once your character hits this, where it is on the screen, that will trigger this ending event. And a hero automated, this is something that usually you have control over your hero character, but once this is triggered, if you can create uh, an actor that does a special uh, set of uh, things. You animate it beforehand. Now the, the player will not have uh, 
power over the hero anymore. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I'll show you how that works. But yeah, once it hits an ending event, you hit there. And you can either, uh, if you have a tile set that is a background already, if you've created it in another program, say this is the screen, you make the screen all one piece, that is when you, uh, you can choose to use that in here, or you can create your background yourself. Since I'm pointing at the screen, you're not seeing this. Um, that is where you pick the tiles you have. You can choose whether it stays in place, or it moves with you, or it is, uh, say, it was just, it wasn't the full, this is a 256 by 256 square. I believe if you had something that was smaller than that, uh, mosaic means that it would tile it for you, and uh, this is the speed in which uh, your your tile set moves in the background. And uh, I'm not sure; I haven't messed with direction yet. But we're not going to use either of those. Okay, first, let us let us make a game area. Okay. To do this, you have your fingers on the one through six keys and you can blip th back and forth very easily to choose to choose a tile you need to using the Q and E keys go through you select what you want to work with so you hit tiles you go over to tiles and it automatically allows you to carry it back into this screen So, we're going to give it a grass, and here's our sidewalk. Oops. A little bit more grass, and a blue sky. Perfect. So that's our background. Um, so right now this is just an image with no properties on it whatsoever. We want to make a, an area where our character is confined in. So you flip through these menus, I think I've said it but I'm going to say it again, with W and E and then once you get to the one you like you can use Z and X to go back and forth. Each one of these screens if you hit F1 it gives you the hints for the shortcuts and to get out of this you hit exit. So these right here, these little blocks these are directions, invisible directions that we place on the play field for our characters to follow. I'm going to make the platform this walkway right here. Okay. Now, if the character doesn't know where to stop, it is going to just fly off of the screen when it hits the end. So, if you want something to land on, uh, if you want grab, this is the platform is where gravity comes into play. If something is standing on a platform, then that's where the gravity stops. If you're going left to right, and you don't want your character to walk off, you give it a wall. Okay. So this is higher than the character can jump with this gravity. It's not going anywhere. Actors. We have uh, some of our... These don't do anything. These are just elements for the game. Uh, but I'll place the image of the ice cream there. Hero. This is our controllable character. I'll place him there. Nickel. 
these are the score elements. And let's see. Ah, okay. Our box. Now, right now, our box has no properties. Our car let's test the test the scene. Oh. Something's buggy there. Yes, our box has no uh, restrictions, so our character can just walk in front of it. If we want to make this an element that our character has to jump over, I'll show you how to do that. Although, need a little bit more room here. We just put a house up there. Okay. We will use the Q and E keys to cycle through uh, our directions whether we want tiles, to use a sound, put text somewhere, actors, here we are, back in directions. Okay, now we can use a wall for the right and left parts because this will affect our character going left to right. Now we use a platform when we want our character to walk on top of something, that is for gravity. Let's test the scene. The character cannot go through it left and right, but can stand on top of it. Now, another neat thing you can do here, uh, if you want to get rid of an instruction, you right-click on it. And now, see, this is a neat behavior. It doesn't affect our character when we go left and right, but if it jumps, he can land on top. So that is, you can have a lot of fun with that. And we see over here. All right. So I'll leave it like that. Now over here, we have um, our ice cream. So I'm going to set another rule using the Z and X keys. that when our hero comes in contact with this ice cream, it will trigger the ending event. So we will set that now. I've created this animation of our little guy dancing, and I want it to play for three seconds, and I want it to play finish dance. Let's try it out. He can jump on the box. Cool. He got a point. No, I can't show you the mouse here. And... Oh, see? It does a little dance, plays a little song, and it ends the game, because it doesn't have any instructions to go anywhere else. Here. So now I can show you the game I've programmed here. You can go as long uh, as you want, really. It says it's 50 screens, but you can go further if you like. You advance on these screens using the W, A, and S, and D. Since I'm back and forth here, I'm just using A and D. So I've put all of my instructions these are all invisible to the player. Uh, I've put, I've made the uh, mailboxes. Uh, you can walk on them. And where you start your main hero is where your game starts. And since with games like this, we're at least in uh, uh, where I'm from, I'm used to immediately going right. So I put a little fun thing over here on the left. You got an extra three coins if you decide to turn left. 
Remember what we did with that Amazon box on the previous screen? We have platforms on the top, walls on the sides. So this creates uh, a pile of boxes our character needs to jump over. And if you want to test the game, you hit spacebar. So I've put the instructions. Uh, I would have I have the ability, you have the ability, we all have the ability to put the instructions on a different screen, but I thought, uh, since I didn't do it with this one, that I would just put them at the bottom, and that is part of the game screen. You can't get that coin, but you can get that coin. Now, these bounding boxes, these are not visible when you export the game. These are just for testing purposes, and it shows you, uh, It shows you all the the, uh, the parts of the elements you have. It's messy, but your game is playable. This game has no enemies. I tried to make an angry box, but uh, it didn't work out so great. And this is basically the same thing over and over again. Now this is, you can jump on the hood of the car to get those coins. Fun. Let's export the game. Let's play the game. Okay, in order to export your games, you use the number keys, you go to the project screen, and you say build game. Here we are, this is our opening screen and this will stay like this until we tell it to go further. So I've hit X. Now the stuff we see on the top, the player and the high score, those colors, those were determined by the character set that we used, as is the print at the bottom. That little smiley face on the bottom left, that is customizable, but I haven't figured out how to do it yet. Uh, but. If you, I, I would assume if you made your own game, you'd probably want your character to be down there for uh, to, you know, to show the lives. Okay. See, there's no bounding boxes now. But there we go. There's our wall element. You can't move any further, but you can't see it. And our character is standing on the platform element, and that's what's stopping him from falling through the screen. I, I I just learned this program mainly to make silly short videos that I didn't need to animate myself. And if I've come so far. Yeah. See, the issue that the character is having there is that the bounding boxes are too close to each other. So, um, this is... Since we have the entire sprite as a big square. That's why it's not falling in the hole, right? So, a little tweaking can make this uh, look a little better. Also, with 3D elements, since these are at an angle, you know, the way that you design your game elements will if you will make things uh, work better so even if you took the, the the size of these things and the size of the grid how everything is these little like each instruction is 16 by 16 and you're 256 by 256 so if you designed your things specifically inside that grid the instructions that you put in there would fit better on things but I didn't I just wanted something that looked cool. This game is not very fun. <laughs> I made it just for a gag, but I wanted to... I went through and I got made all new images 
so it looked cool. See, that triggered the ending event, which then played for three seconds and then advanced to our end screen. And this is our end screen. And uh, we did pretty good. So that um, that is how you make a basic platformer. Uh, once again, the name of this program here is Arcade Game Studio, and it is not supported anymore. I couldn't find this guy on the internet. His website's down, uh, but you can export your games. Uh, it tells you how. Well, geez louise. I hope this at least got you a little bit excited about this program. It only works for Windows, but uh, if you need something to do to kill time when you're locked inside your house for weeks, uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty fun. There are a lot of elements online to teach you how to make sprites and stuff and animations, so I didn't go through that really. There are other people who can explain it a lot better than I could. But the few tutorials I found on this on this program, uh, they had no talking. So I thought, hey, I'll talk. Although the tutorials that were provided by the creator, they're fantastic. All right.